So, it is our first night in Berlin. We're in our hotel room. I haven't taken any pictures of that yet, but I'll show you that in a minute. But I want to show you the view. We have a balcony. That's what we're sitting out here having a glass of wine. We just finished pizza and ate more than I should have. And Walter ate more than he should have. Of course, Walter insisted that we have a salad. And I did take a picture of that and I'll insert that in here at some point. So you can see what $5.99 for a side salad at a pizza joint in Berlin gets you. Not a lot. In fact, pretty much nothing at all. But you have to remember, we're talking American prices, okay? Exchange rate, Canadian. I don't think Americans eat salad. I don't think so either. I don't think they know what they are. But, um, you know, because it's healthy. Yeah. Now the pizza wasn't bad. The pizza was actually fairly good. But let's put it in perspective. Two side salads, and they were tiny, tiny, tiny. tiny were five. Very tiny. Very tiny. Like it, didn't, it was not much more than a mouthful. Yeah, two forkfuls. <laughs> it was a two-bite salad um, with some dressing. We got a choice of dressings. It came in a package, of course. But that's fine. I don't care if it came in a package. I mean, that's how salad dressing comes, right? That's all right. But they were five ninety-nine each, American. So $6. So $12.00. Oh, I'm afraid to do the math. That's about $18. $18 for two salads that were a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of shredded cheese, and I think there might have been a... There's a couple of little pieces of tomato. Very tiny little pieces, and that was it. Well, you'll see it here in the video when I insert it. Was it was iceberg lettuce. It iceberg lettuce. So the pizza itself was $19.99, for a 14 inch deluxe, which had all kinds of things on it. So put those two in proportion. So that makes the pizza $19.99 American, about $25 for the pizza. $25.26. Okay, the math isn't adding up here because the total bill came, oh no, wait, the total bill in America came to almost $31. So that's 40 about $42 Canadian, which, yeah, okay, the exchange rate we know. Uh, it's the salad that bothered me. Yeah, it did, yeah. Um, but, of course, His Highness here, because of his new diet thing that he's on, because, you know, he's pre-diabetic sort of, and he's watching everything that might spike his blood sugar. Apparently, if you have, why, why did you want a salad? Because you eat green stuff, or you eat stuff and then you have carbs. It doesn't spike it as much. However, I don't think that helped very much. Well, not with the amount of pizza we ate. No. Because we could have got away with a sm next size down in the pizza. Yeah, and but you wanted the big one. Well, I, you know, when you see pizza on a, a thing and they tell you, yeah, yeah, it's this, you don't really believe them that it's going to be that size. They always well, inflate it. you might starve it. if you didn't have enough. I hope you enjoyed your six dollar your no your eight dollar salad is all i can say i think you should keep that inside you for quite a while so you can savor it through your whole nutrition system but anyways yeah but live and learn so if you come to berlin um, 31 dollars uh us is 42.51 yeah okay so 42.51 is what it cost us for the pizza okay i'm really not complaining about the price of the pizza I didn't think that was unreasonable for the cost of the pizza, even when you do the exchange for that size and what was on it. It's the salad that bothered me a great deal uh, with that. So if you come to Berlin, the name of the pizza joint is, and if it's a Sunday, it's the only place that's open because there's nothing else open in Berlin on Sundays. Um, just saying. Uh, you get the pizza. The pizza's okay. It's good. Skip the salad. What was the name of the place again? East of Chicago. Yeah. Now, they did have a, when we walked into the place, you can sit down to eat in there. And what they have is they have a pizza bar. Uh, you know, like a salad bar, but pizza. And it looked like it had chicken wings on it, too, and other things. I don't know how much they were charging for that. But the piggies were at the trough. And I'm sorry, I may sound like a snob, but I do not like smorgasbords or buffets. Okay, I really don't like little kids buried up to their elbows with their snotty little noses dripping all over the food. And the food was pretty much exposed. I uh, did not see a sneeze guard anywhere to be seen on that. So, yeah, and there were kids in there buried up to their elbows. So, yeah, not impressed by that. But the pizza was good. 
just don't get the salad. Okay, so our first meal in Berlin, Ohio is this. There's only one place open on a Sunday that's a pizza place, which is fine, but we decided we get a side salad each. This is what you get for a side salad. That's $5.99 American. That's $8. That's an $8 salad. Mm -hmm. uh, not impressed, no. not impressed. This is our balcony. Not huge, but it's kind of nice. And uh, we look out onto a residential area. <clears throat> One thing that impresses us about Berlin as we were driving in here is everything. The houses are very nice, even out in the more the country elements, the farms, everything. People seem to keep their properties, for the most part, very nice. And I would say by looking at some of these farms and these houses and things like this, these ones you see here are duplexes, obviously, but they're, they're fairly new. They look quite nice. Um, I think there's some money here. Maybe people come here to retire. I don't know. Um, can't say as though I've seen so far, but we haven't really explored Berlin because as I said, it's Sunday, everything is shut up <laughs> and we'll do that tomorrow. But you know, maybe this is sort of a retirement community. I don't really know. And here off to the back is sort of a common area, a little parkette or whatever. And earlier there were a couple of kids down there playing with, I hate the name of that game, but you know, you throw the bean bags in the hole, they call it cornhole. That's just disgusting on so many levels. Um, but look at you, look at the scenery out there. It, it is a very, very picturesque area, very nice, you know. So tomorrow we'll be off to explore Berlin and uh, neighboring adjacent places a little further. We're here for two nights and uh, no, we're here for three nights, aren't we coming tonight? And so we're gonna do the um, quilt stores and things like that. There's quite a few in this area. We'll try not to hit any of the uh, Amish as they, did I say a Mennonite a minute ago? I don't know. I mean, a bad habit. We have Mennonites up in where we live kind of a thing, but uh, uh, Amish is what I'm talking about. If I said Mennonite, I meant Amish and uh, tr we'll try not to run them off the road in their buggies and there's lots of them now i'll show you the room inside so it's uh two queen size beds it's a fairly big room actually television set a little dinky on the television but that's okay we didn't come here to watch tv little sitting area and then they have this uh counter space here like a sort of with bar chairs bar stools there is a little fridge and there is a microwave and a coffee maker. Very nice. Uh, has an ironing board and an iron. Not that I need that, but uh, whatever. And the bathroom's very modern. Lots of counter space. I've said it before in videos when we've been on trips. I love a bathroom with a lot of counter space so I can spread my stuff out. And big shower. Really. This is quite large you can get like oh probably five people in there so yeah not that i'm going to try that but you know i can dream so yeah as far as the room is concerned i think it's very comfortable very spacious and it's got everything you really need in a room what are we paying a night for this uh, 179 179 American, that's what, about 250, 260 Canadian? No, I don't think so. What, that's too high? I don't know, maybe. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, that's probably your right. Want to say that again? You're probably right. Didn't catch it. One more time, did you say I was right? Uh, I don't know. As Walter does the mathematics here and calculates it all out. It's 245. Okay, I was a little under, or a little over, but that's actually, that's still very reasonable because a room like this, in our neck of the woods, would be at least 245 Canadian or more, probably closer to 300 for this. So yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty reasonable. And this whole facility, this whole hotel is fairly new. And if you caught the live on Sunday night, um, we did mention that uh, Stephanie is having her spring retreat here at this location. And of course, most people will be staying here for it. Um, 
because you can get a special rate if you're registered for the retreat. I don't know what the uh, cost is, but um, I don't think you'll be disappointed in your room. That's for sure, because very nice. So yeah, so tomorrow we're going to go off and do some more things. And I'll add to this video tomorrow as well, tomorrow night, and post it later on then. And you'll see what we see tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye for now. Before I forget, one thing I need to explain is how our live went on Sunday. It was not our usual quality. We had just gotten into Berlin. I was desperately trying to get the live up as close to the time we usually do it. Didn't manage to, it was about 20 minutes late. I'm not using my computer because I didn't bring my computer with me. I never usually travel with my computer. Maybe I should start. Um, but I travel with my iPad and my iPhone. And I've done lives before uh, using those too. But for some reason, for the life of me, and I think I'm getting Alzheimer's, I don't know, I could not figure out how to connect live with those devices. I finally did it. I don't know what I did, but I did it through my iPad. And my iPad, for some reason, didn't want to do the live unless I turned it in portrait mode, not, excuse me, hiccups, landscape mode. I don't know why. I had this problem last Christmas when we were down in Dahlonegan at uh, Stephanie's retreat uh, then. Same thing then too. So I don't know what it is. What I should have done was connect it live using my cell phone because with it I can do what I'm doing right now. I'm using my cell phone right now. I could do the porch or the landscape mode. Um, but I don't know. I didn't. I don't think, I think too my brain was not functioning. I hadn't had anything to eat all day. We drove with only one little 10 minute stop to have a little pee break at a welcome center on the way down here. I mean, it's not that long a drive. It's a little over six hours uh, to get here. Um, but you know, when you're in the car for that length of time, you start to turn into a bit of a vegetable. And I guess that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I was a vegetable and I was getting flustered. So yeah. Um, sorry about the quality of the video. It was short too. And on top of it all, I had forgotten all about uh, hitting the button that says, you know, you don't let anybody chat unless they've been subscribed for at least five minutes to the channel. So we got trolls. And thank you, Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches. Stephanie is a moderator for my channel and she got right in there, swooped in and knocked those suckers out. And all I can say is those people don't have a life. If that's all they've got time to do is to search for live productions and cause havoc with it. So I was glad I had Stephanie on that. Anyways, if I do another live while we're here, I hope that I will be able to make things a little bit smoother with it. Um, I'll check out a few things beforehand. I won't be as rushed and we'll probably do a live uh, we'll at least do a video anyway. So when I meet up with Stephanie and we get her new machine all set up. Yes, she bought herself a Janome 550E embroidery machine. And uh, we're excited to help her out with that and get it out of the box. She hasn't taken it out of the box yet. She's waiting for us to arrive. So we're going to do an unboxing and set up and things like that. So that's going to be exciting too. So stay tuned for that. That'll be later this week coming up. So I think that's all I'm going to say today. It is Sunday evening. As I said, I will carry on this video tomorrow with our adventures tomorrow in Berlin as we quilt shop and do other types of shopping as well. And I'll talk to you more about that then. One thing more I want to mention about this room is usually in hotel rooms, I bring a whole collection of different types of connectors so I can plug in my devices in convenient spots to get at them so they recharge in the night. Well, I have to say I'm impressed here because they have two outlets here and you can see I've got one of my things, my smartwatch already plugged into that. But if you look at the one at the top, which is plugged into the clock right here, they have a plug that actually has a receptacle on the end of the plug so you can still use that outlet. Now, I think that's genius and that's really good. And this room is actually full of a lot of outlets. So no complaints there about plugging in my devices. Okay, so it's Monday morning at around 7.30, and uh, this is the courtyard they have out here. It's quite nice. You can sit out here, have your morning coffee. 
And they do have some rooms that open up onto it as well. well they got a fire pit. A couple of them. Oh, and they have a nice little sitting area under here. So if it rains, you'll stay dry. This is very nice here too. Oh yeah, okay, in there is where the room is. There's a quilting group in there right now this morning. But this is nice, if the weather's nice, you could sit out here. I don't know what it'll be like in April when we come for this, but at least in the summer, this is a nice little area. And then, you saw this last night from the balcony, a little closer look here. They have uh, this shelter kind of a thing with uh, picnic tables and everything down below. Landscaping's very nice as well. Walter's taking a picture of it. Let's try. So yeah, it's a very nice accommodation. Now we just had breakfast. The breakfast, well, it will do. There was scrambled eggs, some bacon, some oatmeal. They had some little cakes. They did have some yogurt. They had toast, uh, bagels, English muffins. You, you toast it yourself and that kind of thing. Not a lot of variety in the brekkie, um, but you know, enough to get you through the day, I'm pretty sure. Um, and coffee, of course. And they did have, they had chocolate milk and I love my chocolate milk. Um, so yeah, so overall though, I think what we're paying for it and its location, um, I think it's it's I think it's a good value, really. Now we were just observing and speculating on these properties down here that are adjacent to the hotel, and we've noticed something. They're all landscaped exactly the same, with the exception of maybe one or two. There doesn't seem to be any vehicles in them. So we are thinking that maybe these are rental units. If you want to come down here for a little holiday, you can maybe rent one of these and and stay there because everything's very well landscaped very nicely maintained all maintained the same so that's probably what these are if someone that's been to berlin before knows you might be able to give us some indication of what these are update on what i just said about these places walter just looked them up and they're called the what picket place condominiums picket place condominiums so they're condos yeah. so Maybe people own them and come here because look, for there vacation. Are differences. There's somebody that has an umbrella down there. There's somebody here that has a wreath on the door. Yeah, I saw that. So, yeah. So maybe these are not like people don't live here year round, but maybe they come down for vacations or something. I don't know. Because we haven't seen any people. There's, it is kind of rude. Well, there was no people last night when we were oh, sitting out in the rude. balcony either. Yeah, but mind you, if somebody's looked outside our houses in the summertime, do what they see people sitting around. Well, outside. that's that's true. Yeah. But, and speaking of balconies, we're up there at the top, the third floor of the corner. But if you notice the way the balconies are designed, they're very private. You don't have like one balcony right next to the other. There's a wall between you, which I think is kind of nice as well. You're not disturbing other people if you're sitting out there having a drink or two. And I uh, should stand back so you can see what this looks like. This is not the main entrance. This is the side entrance. But for the most part, I'm fairly impressed. So our first stop of the day is Lone Star Quilt Shop here in Mount Hope, which is just a little bit beyond Berlin. And uh, busy road and we're gonna go inside and see what we find so we're inside and look like they've got a great variety I'll just hello. hello hi do you mind if I take some video while I'm in here oh I don't mind okay I won't put you in <laughs> Thank That's you. Okay. unless you want to be in but <laughs> Nice store. Thank you. Yeah, lots of variety. 
Here's a beautiful quilt. Lots of Christmas fabric too, and I am in the market for some Christmas fabric. There's a kit. No, 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 stay away from the kit. Well, that looks cute. Oh, I like that. Really nice shop. This is one that's on Stephanie's list. And I can see why. There's lots to choose from. And I'll do some shopping in a minute after I do the video. Wow. I can see I'm gonna do a lot of shopping in here today. Good variety. Ooh, that might. Stephanie's Christmas quilt. Twelve ninety nine. So that's basically. There's ten ninety nine. So I'm thinking in Canadian though. So in Canadian that would be around eighteen. Average. Some nice bundles. They open very early. They're open at eight o'clock. And here, if you want to buy a quilt, you can. What's it come out to, Walter? No, it's not bad. And they look like they're a Juki dealer. Juki long arm. These are nice looking bundles too. Quilted kitties. Looks like it's a kit. Okay, time to do some shopping. Okay, so our first stop was the Lone Star Quilting Store and I highly recommend it. That is a great store. If you can't find what you're looking for there, you're not gonna find it anywhere. It was really well stocked up. And uh, yeah, I did spend a little more than I figured on spending in there. Do you wanna know how much? Well, it was only a little over $700 US which is just under $1,000 to Canadian. But I got some great stuff and I did buy a bolt of background fabric that I like. Their prices in there were pretty good. And even with the exchange rate, they put it to what we would be spending pretty much in our area now turn where we are. So it wasn't bad. Mind you, I'm buying in yardage. I'm not buying in meterage, uh, but you know, three, three inches is three inches. Um, but anyways, yeah, nice place. Now we're heading to another place called Zinks, and Zinks has, well, all kinds of fabrics. They're not just exclusively a quilt store. They After sell, mile, you know, you will reach fabric. A destination. A second the destination store. will be on your right. There are what? I think they're like uh, end of lines and seconds. Stuff like that. And I don't think they're like, I think they're supposed to be like a discount store. So we'll we'll see what we see there. You have reached your destination. This Please is Zinx. Right. This place is huge. Your prices are about the same. Yeah. This is extra wide back in. Ooh, it is. I think. Ooh. Uh, well, we're not. We're doing more than looking. But uh, do you mind if I video in here? Thank you. Great store. So Walter says this is wide back. Oh, I may have to buy yeah. some wide back. Thirteen ninety-five. I like that one too. 
$13.95 for a yard. So that works out to what, about $16, $17. That's still a lot less than what I pay for wide back at home. At what home, its average is $30 Canadian. As you can see, this place is just absolutely huge. Just when you thought you'd seen it all in this store, then you come into this room and they have ribbons and they have serger threads. Uh, they have other branded bolt. I don't know what that means, but it's, but like $5.99 a yard. They have buttons, they have zippers. So if you're doing bag making, they've got everything. Notions, applique stuff, laces and trims, canvas duck, outdoor fabric. This place has everything. It's incredible. Okay, right now we're at something called the Shia. I'm not sure how to say that market. It's all these barn like looking buildings. I'm assuming there are shops and things like that inside. So we're going to go in. And so this is when in one called Country Gardens and it's got a lot of gitch. And here are cut tchotchkes or whatever you think. Tons of things. Ladies would be impressed. Smells nice in here too. Garden stuff out there. Coffee's here. There's the coffee shop is there. Lots of interesting things. You used to have nice places like this in Canada. Yeah, not anymore. Now these caught my eye. These pots that you could probably put a little light in and put on your front step or whatever or garden. That would be kind of cute. How much is one of these little thingies? Let's just take a look, shall we? $57.99, American. Well, I'm not terribly out of the way for that kind of thing, I guess. A hat for Walter. Does it look like an arm? Yep. But you do with it without a hat, so it really doesn't matter. Need a new carpet? Mm -hmm. Now we're going over to the other kitschy place. To the village gift barn.
think they're doing a little construction here. Look like they're fixing up the front. So if you're looking to buy a quilt, this place, which I'm not sure what it was called now, on the main street, has all kinds of them. But right now, these quilts are all a half price off. So I don't know if that's, it says half off here, like 299. So I don't know if that's the actual price or it's half off. I think that's probably, yeah. It's got to be because there's no way it quilts that. It says uh, half off of. So I don't know. But quite a few here. Not that I'll be buying a quilt. I mean, do quilters actually buy quilts? We make them. But there's a lot of them here. A lot. And then they have a lot of these little things and uh, Walters discovered something. Oh, Marshall home made in China, but is that quilts or is that these things? I don't know. I bet you these are handmade quilts. Well, one thing, they are not hand quilted. They are definitely machine quilted by looking at the stitches. So, that's the big question of the day. Are these actually handmade? Okay, that isn't even bound. That one is turned inside out. Are any of these really bound? Well, some are, some are. I'd say that one was handmade. Try looking at the corner. So I don't know. Good question. I think some of these are definitely made. I don't know if they all are or not. It's a mystery. Okay, they were way too cute. Okay, so this is the main drag in Berlin. It's a very busy road here, as you can see and hear. Oh, another pizza place. Wow. Hardly hear yourself look down the street. The size of this place is a little deceiving because you think that there's only a few stores on the main drag, but it does go down quite a ways and there's other places as well. And there are places here you can get food and things like that, although I didn't look at the signs, but I think most of them are close up fairly early in the, in the day, like five o'clock, six o'clock at night. Not absolutely sure, but I have a feeling that that's the way it is. Okay, so let's go. So here's another place we saw on the videos on YouTube we watched of Berlin called Souls Exchange. It's got Arts and Crafts Mall, Arts and Crafts Extravaganza. They have one of a kind items. They've got something for everyone. I'm looking forward to looking at the tchotchkes. Okay, this is inside Souls. Right here. Oh, need a little stool. 25 bucks. Can we push in your little stool? What do you need? Yeah, a little, 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 uh, little tables. Table, little tables with your TV set on. What TV? The one on your workroom. Well, I, I've got my box. You made my box. My box works fine. I'm happy with my box. So this looks like it's a consignment craft mall. Okay, I'm probably going to have to edit out the music in the background because it'll be demonetized. It'll have a strike against me from YouTube, which is a real pain in the butt. Which means that all my commentary that I'm making right now, you're never going to hear if I have to do that. So, yeah, why am I talking? Just watch. They have a book set section, and these are novels. And as you can see, they have a common theme happening. They all have Amish ladies on the cover. And, well, basically, I think this is Harlequin romance Amish style. 
So this is the quilt, Helping Hands Quilt Shop. And uh, we're gonna go inside here and see what there is. I already spent a lot of money, but what the heck, what's a little more? So we're inside. And they have a lot of quilts here for sale. And these are real quilts. Well, 30. Yeah, that's more the price than like that other place. I think those are fake quilts. And they're bound like normal quilts. Yeah. within an hour and a half and they are life flighting her they're, they're helicoptering that's the way Kevin explained it helicoptering her to downtown Cleveland Clinic so it's kind of dampening the start of the retreat wall of color nice blenders books stencils patterns Boutiques. Yeah, lots of things here to look at. So I think I'll shop some. Here's something we don't see in our country. 24 hour public parking, 24 hour. Walter's gone back up to get the car. We're in Millersburg right now. We're going over across the street to this pub. But oh my God, I have never seen little places so full of the traffic that we have seen here. It's incredible. Walter parked on the street up here and look, you can see the cars just keep coming. I don't know why that is, but it's like, maybe this is a major roadway. And I don't know how the people here stand the noise that comes from the trucks. It's non-stop. It is so loud and so busy. Really, who would have thought that such small places would be like this? I'm not sure how, how, what the population is of Millersburg. Um, but anyways, there are lots of places to stay in this area though, tons of them. Um, but I think they all book up pretty much uh, at this time of the year. We're here in the summer. And I think it was probably a very popular destination for people to come and do shopping, tourist attraction, things like that. But yeah, it is quite the noisy little city. Okay, we're having supper at uh, in Millersburg. This is the Bag Sports Pub. Um, the bench seating, I. They sat us on a bench seat and uh, I couldn't sit there. My claustrophobia uh, kicked in. They were very, very tight, the seats to it. So we are sitting in the bar area now. And I don't know what Walter's doing. Always oh, checking out the password for the internet here. What is it? Bags Pub 11. Bags Pub 11, okay. But uh, it's a nice looking place. It's got a lot of character to it, as you can see. This is just one part of it. There's actually quite a bit here. There's more on this side of this partition. There's something down in behind there, and there's something called the Old Stone Cellar, which someplace downstairs as well. So it's quite big. Okay, the next store we went to just will boggle your mind. I'm sure you've seen it now in the video. Just huge, 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 and really good prices. Now, you have to be careful. Some of the fabric there is not the best quality, but much of it really is. So if you take a look here, this is what I bought. I bought another bolt of background fabric, little different lighter print, little vines and flowers. I think I've had some of this before at home, but look at the price on this. This was 20 yards at 574 a yard. I mean, even in exchange, that's about mm, $8 Canadian a yard. So yeah, I did buy some fat quarters because I like to have some uh, white fat quarters laying around as well because I make napkins from them or I use them for smaller projects, things like that. 
They had some of the clips. These are not Wonder Clips or somebody else, but they were really inexpensive. Packages of 12, $2.99 for the small ones and $3.99 for the larger ones. And I use these a lot. And you know, to be honest, I have bought knockoffs of the Wonder Clips before without any problem on Amazon and on Timu. And so I don't imagine I'm going to have any problem with these ones either. Here, these are wide back. They had a great selection of wide back at a phenomenal prices. Uh, I think one of these, I think the red one was $12.95 a yard. And the gray and the off-white were $13.95 a half yard. And so that translates to about $17 a yard. Well, for wide back, for 108 inch. I bought three meters of each. And these ones um, basically would run around, what did I say? About $17, $18 a yard in Canadian money. We pay anywhere from $28 to $34, $35 a meter. And a meter is, 30, is three inches longer than a yard. Um, so yeah, that was a good price. And as I said, they had some good selections of that. Now this line of fabric here are all the same, uh, line. They're called burlap, burlap by, let me see if I can find a salvage that says what they're, who they make them by. Nope. Some of you out there may know. Um, I don't know if they're Riley Blake or Kaufman. I have no idea. Who, who makes these? I'm sure somebody out there knows. But I think I've had some of these before. Um, and I really like them. I like the texture as blenders. They're great. So I bought a rainbow of colors, as you can see. And I bought two meters of each of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 meters of fabric. And they were something like $6.00. A yard, I said meters again, but yards, you know what I mean. Uh, I think they were about $6 a yard. That's really good, even when you translate it again into Canadian money. So, yeah, so all of this haul here cost me a little bit less. It was around about $450 uh, American. No, sorry, it was about 300 and something or a little less. It came out to about $488 Canadian, I think. So we're up to, if you're keeping track in Canadian funds, about a thou, uh, or about 1500 which, as I said, I set money aside because I know I'm going to spend a lot, so this is okay. And then I got these. Now, I've heard people talk about the cleaning tools for your machine, reusable silicone brush brushes. I could not get them anywhere in the stores I looked at in Canada. But I found them in the third quilt store we went to, and that was Helping Hands. And I think I mentioned this came from Zinc, um, or Zank, Zanks, 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 um, Z-I-N-C-K-S. Um, but anyways, this, these little tools came from Helping Hands. Helping Hands is right on the main drag of Berlin. Um, they have some nice fabrics, but nothing I haven't seen somewhere before. Prices there on fabrics were a little higher than compared to these other two. And I just didn't see anything in there that was thrilling me. So this is all I bought from them. Yep. Spent a whole, with tax on that, $5 and some odd cents American. Um, so that's my haul for one day. Oops, I missed one thing. I got some of this vinyl bag mesh. And it's the heavy stuff. Like what Shannon, I think, was using in her uh, bag during the retreat, uh, virtual retreat she did with Stephanie. So I picked up one. I think Walter picked up one of these as well. And um, for $6. So, you know, I don't have a specific purpose for it yet. But occasionally I make bags and I may use that for that. So that came from um, Zinks as well. And did I mention the fat quarters? I think I did, yeah. Fat quarters, $1.99 for fat quarters. And they had lots of colors and things, but as I, I went just for the white, as you can see. So overall, that was my haul for one day. 
Uh, we did go off to Walmart later on and we picked up a few illegal things. Not going to talk about those. Well, they're illegal in our province. You know, has to do with your grass. Um, I'm not talking about the stuff you smoke. I'm talking about the stuff on your lawn. And uh, I picked up a couple of other miscellaneous little items there too. And we had to pick up some wine as well. Um, that Walmart had a really rotten selection of wine. There's a fly in here. This is nice. Somebody's got to die real soon. So, yeah, that was the haul for today. And uh, who knows what I'll buy tomorrow. Okay, so it's that time to show you what my haul was today at the three different uh, quilt shops we went to. The first one we went to was in Mount Hope, and it is called Lone Star. Highly recommend it. Prices are fairly good. And... Uh, they had a vast selection, as you saw in the video from inside the store. So this is what I bought. I bought a bolt of white with a very fine print because I always, a lot of times I'm always using white. A lot of times I'm always using, not good grammar. Uh, a lot of times I use white as my background. So I like to have it in stock. I have a couple of bolts at home or one and a half bolts. So this one, and I'll show you in a little bit, I bought another bolt today too, but not from this place. I of course bought some yardage and uh, I saw the maple leaf and this is for future quilts of valor. I already have some, not quite this design and I'm not sure if this is by Northcott or not. I think it is. No. Oh, look at that. I didn't realize it. It's Dan Morris. And you know I love Dan Morris by QT Fabrics. I didn't know that he had a line of fabric. Um, yeah, that was Dan Morris too. Well, that's okay. I didn't realize that. I just assumed it was sort of Northcott. I knew it looked a little different from what I've had in Northcott before, but there we go. Now, these ones are Christmas fabrics. I am going, I'm doing Stephanie's sew along that she's starting in August and I've been debating. She shows one in a blue color wave and you know how much I love blue, almost as much as Stephanie does. And I probably like it more than Stephanie does. And then she had it in traditional green and reds for Christmas. The design of the quilt, her pattern could be, you know, it doesn't have to be Christmas. So it just depends on your fabric. So it'll work with anything. So I decided to split the difference down the middle and I bought blue Christmas fabrics. And this is what I think I'm going to do. Now, I only need a background, a dark and a light. And you see then that I have four fabrics here. So this will be my background, which has very little snowflakes on it. As you can see there, I love this print. I love the colors in it. And then I have not decided completely, although I'm leaning towards this one, as my lighter shade. But either one would work. This one has sort of, looks like holly berries. And this one is snowflakes. A little different in the colors, in terms of the shades of the blue. So when I get home, I'll make the determination of which one I like better. But those will be the ones for that. Now, I wasn't gonna buy any more kits, but I did because I saw this pattern. Winterberry Cardinals, and I really love it. It definitely is a Christmas or winter type of quilt. And they had right sitting next to it, a bundle of fabric to do this particular pattern in. So it's already pre-cut the size that you need. That cost me about $92.99, but I love the colors, I love the pattern. And then, okay, this is a quilt I've been thinking about doing for quite some time, and that's the Alaskan Star. And this is the book by, I can never say her first name, Sitar. Uh, and I know someone's going to correct me out there. Uh, Ida, uh, Edia, Edia, Edina, whatever. But uh, you know who she is, because she's been around. But the Alaskan Star pattern is in this book. But there's also about 15 other patterns as well. I'm just looking here to see if I can find the... There's some nice patterns in here. I like that. The Winter Village, that would be cool. 
Oh, so many patterns and so little time, really. Some applique ones. Uh, I'm looking for the Alaskan star. Is this it? I think this might be it. Okay, yeah, here it is. The, not the Alaskan star, it's called the Alaska. I'm sure you've seen this one before. I could have taken a class a couple of years ago at my local store, but I didn't. And uh, yeah, so they had the book. You need this ruler. So I had to buy the ruler as well with it. And then the bundle of fabrics. So here they are. These are all the fabrics that are for that. Um, and they are very, very pretty fabrics as well. Again, a lot of blues. You know I'm drawn to blues, as I've said. The other thing I bought was this ruler. Now, recently I saw a video about using the uh, log cabin ruler by Creative Grids. I happened to have it, bought it quite a while ago, never used it. And then I saw how to use it. So I'm thinking that, yeah, maybe I should do a log cabin quilt again. But I saw this ruler, and although with that other ruler that I just mentioned, I don't really need this one, but um, it has the various lengths to cut your sizes, your strips. You don't need to cut your strips accurately with the other ruler. This one, maybe more so, but I thought, well, I've got both now. So, and there's all the instructions for how to use it came with it. So I did that. So how much are we looking at in this pile of fabric and everything? Well, the bundles, you know, they add up. $128.99 for that one. $92.99 for that one. A bolt of fabric. Good price. She gave me 10% off the bolt. Um, oh, and by the way, we found out that the tax here in Ohio is really, I think it's 3%. Um, was it 3%? I think it was 3%. Maybe it was 6%. I'll have to ask, check that with Walter. But the, it's considerably less than what we pay on tax. We pay 13% on retail purchases. So I got that whole bolt. And I think... It was listed at, yeah, there's the price right there, $11.99 a yard, which is pretty good. Because that even when I do the exchange rate on that, it's about $15 um, a yard. So that's good. So all of this, all their fabrics were priced at a fairly nice, good price. Not excellent, but not bad. Um, so you're looking at $715 U.S., for what I have here, and that translates into just under a thousand dollars Canadian. Don't fall off your chair. I didn't. I planned for this. Okay, I'm going to put this stuff away and I'm going to lay out what I bought at the second and third quilt okay. stores. Okay, so I was not the only one that bought fabric. Walter bought some too, not as much as me, but he did, and here's his whole array laid out here. So Walter, Tell us about those top two fabrics, the Crayola crayons, and the yeah. tools. Those are potential shirts because uh, I like the crayon thing and the price was good. So um, I got that and I was looking for fabric that has tools on it. So I got that one. And these ones came from that place called Zinks or whatever? No, that one came from the tools. One came from that. Oh, Lone Star? Lone Star. Well, oh, okay. Shop. And this one came from because that one was more expensive. And this one came from Zinks because it was cheap. It was five ninety nine a yard. Yeah, so. I mentioned that uh, a few minutes ago about my haul. And these were all six ninety nine a yard. I wanted a bunch of fabrics that were multicolored, sort of in the rainbowy colors. And what's the line of those? Those are, um, what's it called? www.marshalldrygoods.com palette patch palette patch yeah they're yeah. very pretty when you lay them all out in the rainbow yeah. order i've never heard of the mc dry goods type thing I no that I've was news to us news. i'm not sure where what this one is called on this salvage uh this is timeless treasures oh timeless treasures okay we know and timeless it's treasures. Called, uh, 
It just says pattern ABC. I don't know. It doesn't really say. Okay, I'm being attacked by this fly. We're going to have to get rid of it. Okay, so you got those. Those all came from, did we say where these came from? They came from Zinx too, They right? came from Zinx too, and they were six ninety nine a yard. That's okay. That's one of the reasons I bought them. And then these little fat quarters you got from Zinx as well, right? Yeah, they were $1.99 each. And the reason I bought these is because I don't really have very much plain white fabric or uh, or gray fabric in, that I can use offhand. So I just thought I'd get a couple of those, and they were cheap first, so... That wasn't too bad. Now, your big purchase that came from Lone Star is this bundle, and you bought that bundle because it goes with this pattern. And so tell us about this pattern. Okay. I, at first, I wasn't sure. I thought, I thought I automatically get caught up on the colors in these, these kinds of bundles. So I saw the bundle, and then I saw one with this pattern. And then I found out that the pattern, it's a uh, paper piecing pattern. And it's which, a pattern by, what's her name? Where's her name on? Jacqueline DeJong. Yeah, she's very famous for these types of patterns. So I thought I might give it a go. Yeah, he's going to try uh, paper piecing. Good luck for him, uh, to him, because I won't try it. But while we were there, she, Jacqueline DeJong, that is her name, DeJong, DeJong, yeah. She was there teaching at the store uh, a workshop. And uh, the lady said to us, the, the owner of the store, she said, would you like to go down to the classroom and just see what this looks like? Because they're working on something similar to this. And so we did. And uh, we didn't bother to speak to Jacqueline de Jong or anybody else. They were busy. Um, they were all huddled around her. She was showing them something. So we just quietly went in, observed, and, and left again. But, uh, yeah, but that's so pretty. It's all very pretty, very rainbow here so yeah now how much you spend walter in total out of the two places uh, approximately four hundred dollars american American. yeah so more canadian like about five something yeah. canadian um but anyways yeah so we're keeping the town in business uh today and as i said now you, you didn't buy anything at helping hands did you no i didn't I really see anything that really uh nothing grabbed you and no. It was all like fairly average stuff. Stuff you can get anywhere. Anywhere. And like I said, I was sort of looking for some specific stuff for a shirt that I might not have. And I have some certain things in mind. And um, unless I find them somewhere, I probably won't buy much more. No. Yeah, I, I may not. Unless I. Now I'm getting very, very picky about what I buy in wherever else we end up going to. Because, um, yeah, you know, I liked what I bought and they were good prices. But to be honest, most of the stuff that I bought and even the stuff that Walter has here, it is available in our area. Yeah. Uh, like in those colors and things yeah. like that. So. Yeah, it is, but for more money. But it's a lot more money. That's the thing. That was the That's kicker. That's actually the kicker. That's actually, I would not have bought this if they were regular price because I could get this at home. The reason I bought this was uh, that I could get it at home for twice the price. Yeah, twice, even a little bit more, like two and a half times more. Yeah. So that was only about five ninety nine. Well, okay, you got to do the exchange rate though. Yeah, it's twice that. the price. So about twice it's the about price, half yeah. the price of what we would have paid for it at home. Yeah. That's the only reason I bought it. Yeah, so that's our haul today. And uh, we're going to put, well, just going to put this away and then we're going to pour ourselves a glass of wine. And, and uh, this Oh, he's not kit, done talking. Okay, go on. <laughs> I might have been able to get at home, but I just happened to see it there. And I thought, well... I'll Nail get, it. I'll get it because I'm not going to... It won't be easy to find if I wanted to get it somewhere yeah. else. Um, yeah, like you could get that pattern at home and that. But yeah. it very clever at what they do at uh, Lone Star is that they've got a lot of these bundles made up to go with these patterns, as you know, from what I bought and said. And, you know, when you see the fabrics already laid out and picked out for a pattern that's as complicated as something like this, yeah, you're going to buy the two together. And they know that. And I think that's a very clever marketing. And nothing against them for doing that. It's a business. They got to make some money. And it's okay. It makes it easier for me. Okay, so we're going to put this away and come back and do a recap of the day. We have found an aisle in the Walmart here in Millersburg that you will not see in our stores anymore. 
And these are insecticides, pesticides. Look, weed and grass killer. Ground clear zero. Season long weed control. Weed and grass killer. And then the granddaddy of them all. Weed dandelion doom and weed warrior. This is not stuff we have anymore since it's outlawed in our province. Yeah, don't ask us why we're looking at it. Okay, so Walter's looking in space. So we're sitting out here on our deck, enjoying some wine. Well, I'm using that lightly because this white anyways, the red is one we brought with us. We bought this one from Walmart, this white, and uh, it's their own brand. They, well, we couldn't get any. They didn't have anything selection-wise. No. Um, and it's not like there's a lot of liquor stores around here. No. It's just sort of a semi-dry area, pretty much. Um, but anyways, I just tried it. And, well, let me give you a, a, a audio bit. We'll have to have a decent liquor store somewhere. This uh, wine might we be. Go over the stuff we go over yeah. There. Um, this might be a uh, a wine that would be best served as a spritzer. A lot of spritz, very little wine. I don't know, but anyways, you know, after you've had a glass or two of it, you don't really care. So, uh, Walter's drinking the better stuff that we brought with us. Uh, we did buy two bottles of this, and we bought two bottles of a red. We haven't tried their red yet. As I said, that's not the red. That's uh, what was left over from the vines that we brought. Okay, so recap of the day. Well, the big thing of the day, besides doing all the shopping, was Walter and his phone. And, well, Walter, what happened? Well, I had a problem setting up the SIM card at home for the uh, phone. So I thought, well, I'll leave it until we go. Maybe it was because I was trying to hook it up in Canada. And so... Um, but I made the mistake of saying not to, for the SIM card not to be active until um, the day before we were leaving. And um, the, during the activation, it didn't work. It it um, uh, it didn't work the first time. So I thought it was because I was doing it too early or something like that. Well, no, I get here and I tried to do the activation here, and it wouldn't work. So I contacted the company, which they don't really have really great. It's Jethro, which is T-Mobile or whatever. And we've used Jethro once before. When we but went, it worked right away the yeah. last time. Right? When we went down to Dahlonega, yeah. um, we used those, and we had not any problem. That's why we got these eSIM cards again you from know, them. last time we didn't do eSIMs. Oh, we had we actual had physical, physical sims. sims, yeah. And they worked fine. But then I thought, well, these phones are eSIMs, so I thought, well, we'll try that, right? Steve had no problem activating his, but mine, I have had a problem with it. There's and something you don't hear every day that I didn't have a problem and that Walters worked fine. Yeah. And Not so this time. I uh, was in contact with them today through several emails. They tried several things, and they still can't get it to work, so... I, I have now asked for a refund because I said uh, is I as my message to them was that I said it's no point because they started asking me to do stuff that I did the first time around and I said well wait a minute I've done this before right and um, I sent them the information that that was given to do and I said I don't see the point in me wasting my vacation time and them bit wasting their time looking at it, I'd rather just get a refund. Besides that, Steve has a phone that works. Um, so we it's not like we're without any kind of communication down here. And for the most part, we're using our internet connection within the hotel room itself, more so than the other. The only thing that we're using the phone for is our navigation system in the car, but Walter also has a Garmin navigation system that's not dependent upon us being uh, connected to uh, a cell uh, carrier because it runs through satellite. So we're not stranded without it. And I can listen to music. Uh, I have music on my phone that I can, I don't have to 
have an active internet connection to no to so it. it's just very annoying and it made it doubly worse to try and figure out what the problem is because we didn't have access to a laptop and we his phone of course he couldn't call them from the phone because that's why we have the sim cards because roaming charges on the plans that we have are astronomical um so the sim card was the way to go so yeah but anyways mine works so that he spent a, quite a few hours actually screwing around with this and you know what i say well you tried to make it do something that you couldn't do you didn't read all the instructions i read all the instructions oh no you're well, an idiot you're the one that <laughs> you're an idiot you're an idiot i'll go away yeah it worked fine for me yeah, I don't know, know why this because i suggested to you not to do it ahead of time well i'm glad because that i did listen to you at that point because look where i we be have two of them that's yeah. not working probably anyways so that's what we did today uh, you saw our shopping. We wandered the streets of Berlin. Doesn't take long. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of shops selling junk. Yeah, there's a lot. If, you, if you're the kind of person, and that kind of person would probably be of the female variety who loves, um, you know, tchotchkes. Uh, there's a wide selection of tchotchkes here. Uh, all kinds of things. I mean, it, nice to look at, yeah. but, you know, practicality. Mm -hmm. Well, not our cup of tea. Oh, I just had a drink of that wine again. Okay. We'll keep trying to get acclimatized to that. And by the way, do Americans have something against screw caps on their wines? Because these wines that we bought all had corks. Now, we never leave home without a corkscrew so when we travel, just in case. But it's kind of weird. Because um, in Canada, we've had... Canada, no, practically none of them use the corks. No, anymore. not anymore. And now, we've been told, even by the wineries and stuff like that, that it actually is better if you don't use corks because, first of all, it's cheaper for them. And the other one, other thing is, is that it's, will corks, if you get a bad cork, they've had diseases in corks and stuff like that. If you get a bad cork uh, supply, it can cause the wines to go off. Yeah. And um, uh, so... Like, I mean, and plus, uh, screw cap wines are resealable, so. Yeah, which is nice. Um, I mean, you can buy hundreds of dollars worth of wine. Uh, you can buy the most expensive wine, and it still has a screw it's cap. It's got to have a screw cap, okay. yep, with it. But uh, anyways, so we went to Walmart, of course looked around for a few things and i alluded earlier that uh, we bought a few illegal things well they're not illegal here but it's pesticides pesticides are banned in pesticides are banned by home use however if you get a, a company a, what do you call it like a, the weed man a weed can't company or whatever they're allowed to use them because it's for their business yeah so if you want weed-free lawns you have to subscribe to a service and and i'm cheap i don't want to do that and you know there's all kinds of home concoctions you can make with vinegar and lemon juice and this and that and essential oils and who knows what else and guess what they don't really work i mean and even if you get down your hands and knees and pull the little suckers up by the I, roots they I still come up this stuff sparingly because yeah. um well it's liquid first gold. of all because they can't get it and i can order the stuff from uh out western canada but they charge a hundred dollars a bottle for it so yeah and um, you see you can get it in western canada because it's it is not banned there it's on our province i don't know how many provinces have a band on it but it's up to the province and our province decided to do that however golf courses they're absolutely in our area, not a weed in sight. And yeah, the golf courses are they can to use it. it. And who plays golf on those kind of courses? The Richie Mucky Mucks. And everybody in the neighborhood that has a weed service is obviously using it because yep. they, they're weed service. But, you know, if I want to get a weed service for a year, they charge you $1,000 to do your lawn. So. Maybe the one neighbor on our side that have the uh, very green weed lawn. Um, you can just like throw a little 
over there and see what happens. But anyway, so yeah, and the other thing we bought at Walmart uh, was my water pick, my portable travel water pick, decided that it wasn't going to take a charge anymore, even though it has not been used very much and I've only had it for about a year. Um, in fact, the last trip I took it on, the only trip I've ever taken it on was when we went to Australia. And I love my water pick, my tabletop one. And that one was doing okay as well, but won't take a charge. Well, I think the problem is in the charger cord, but of course the charger cord is prioritor, prioritor, prior. Actually, it could actually be the battery because you don't use it all the time. Well, maybe. But anyways, I wrote to water pick. I got an answer back from them today. It was bullshit answer. It was a canned answer. I anticipated it was that. So when we were in Walmart, I looked for another one. And they did have uh, a couple of varieties in the water pick brand, but they also had their own brand, which was mm, considerably cheaper. And it took batteries, actual batteries. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know, for, I think it was 1997 at Walmart, whereas the other ones were like 37 and 57. And so I thought, well, I don't use that one that much, you know, um, but I do miss having not having one with me on this trip. So I bought it. I've tried it out. Um, it's okay. It's not as good as a water pick, of course. Um, it doesn't have the power that the water pick does. I mean, it's not bad powder power. It doesn't hold as much water either. So you got to do two refills to, you know, get through your, your regime. But anyways, bought that. And what else did we pick up at Walmart? Uh, you got some face cleaner. Oh yeah, yeah. And some chocolate. And yeah, they have their popcorn. own, they have their own brand of astringent face cleaner. And I used to buy it all the time at the Walmart in our area. And it's just, it's their Equate brand and it's great. And it's about half the price of one of the name brand ones like Clean and Clear. And uh, I just can't get it anymore. They never have it at Walmart in our area. They haven't had for quite a long time. So I've been buying it clean and clear from Amazon because it's really actually the best price. But they had it here, the Equate one. So I bought three bottles of it. They were like two fifty seven dollars a bottle, which even with the exchange rate on that is still a bargain uh, for that. So yeah, I, I will have a lovely clear complexion for a long, long time. Um, did we buy anything else? We looked at drugs, but we didn't need any. Um, because Americans have like a real selection of over the counter, like fun things <laughs> uh, for it. And, uh, anyways, we didn't buy any of that. Uh, we bought it. Walter bought a sugar free chocolate bar, chocolate bar, and I bought a dark lint chocolate bar lime um walter says well if you want that you can have it you don't have to worry you're not having your blood thing do whatever and i go yeah right i don't want to be eating that and all this stuff he gets that's sh no sugar added or that most of it has that alcohol, sugar, the, sugar alcohol which makes you poop a lot so yeah what's the point um I can't think if we bought anything else exciting there. We looked up and down the aisles. So many things, so little time. Um, no, I don't think we did. Don't think no. there was anything else. We went out for dinner in Miller, uh, Millersburg to the Beggs Pub, which, well, I had the bourbon burger, which was actually very tasty. One thing I really liked was the selection you had with it because you could have it with about four different kinds of cheese you get to pick. And uh, the bourbon burger had a, a grilled slice of pineapple on it. Some of you will probably be grossed out with that. You're probably the same people that don't like pineapple on your uh, pizza, but I do. And uh, that was good. The sauce was good that was on it. And uh, there was bacon too. And it came with your choice of a side. So we both ordered. Walter got a... Um, wrap, so a turkey wrap, did you? A turkey wrap, and she kind of threw me off because she said, do you want a whole order or do you want a half order? And I got the impression this was going to be really big, right? And well, you asked her how big. Yeah, and she sort of said, 
beer like this. Like the half ones. The half ones. And I thought, oh, well, that's going to be a lot. And so I thought, okay, I'll just have the half. But then it came and it wasn't really that big. It wasn't a lot. No. Um, And we both got salads as our side. And this time, the salad was decent uh, with it. You know, and considering that that was included in the price of what we paid for and it still wasn't an eight dollar salad no. like if we at that east side uh, east of of chicago pizzeria place i've said before don't buy don't get the salad you know so uh yeah that place was okay it was um, okay but it wasn't my rap was okay but it wasn't really outstanding I, as far as i was food. okay with my burger it was it, t- it was tasted okay but it was supposed to have turkey in it and uh, bacon, and there was a sparse amount of bacon in it. Mm. I th- well, I think that the bacon on my burger too might have been not. A lot. It was enough for me. I was happy enough with it, but and it was on a pretzel, soft pretzel bun, which was nice as well. You had the choice of that or a, another kind of bun. So, and I like the pretzel buns. So, anyways, that was pretty much our day. And you saw the hall and everything else like that. Um, I did play around this morning and played with the live uh, setup. And I have figured it out. Um, And I have figured out how to get it so it's not in portrait mode. If we do another um, live at some point before we get home, then I know what I'm doing this time. So that's a good thing. All right. So our plans tomorrow. Well... I don't know how many more quilt stores we're going to go to. Maybe one, maybe two. I don't know. I'm kind of, I know you're not going to believe this, but I'm kind of shot, shopped out. Um, and um, we're... It's just that now it seems like the fabric is like... All the same. A lot of the fabric that you buy here is pretty much the same stuff we, are, we have. In yeah, what well, we can get at home. And um, I'm not seeing a lot of stuff that are stuff that we can't get at home. Except for, like, we went to that Zinks and I saw the fabric, and it was a good price compared to what we have to pay. Yeah. And you saw the variety of things you can get at Zinks, too, besides just fabric. The notions, ribbons, everything like that. And that was in the video I did while we were in the store as well. So, yeah, we may go to, there's a cheese place here. There's a couple of cheese places. Um, There is a winery as well. Yeah, so I think we're doing that tomorrow. Yeah go around a little bit more. Actually, what happened was they made a wrong turn out of Walmart and we ended up taking a more scenic route back to uh, to uh, the hotel. The hotel. And actually, that was kind of a nice Yeah, that was kind of nice. It's, it's beautiful country here. It's very pretty. People keep their properties, as I said before, up very, very nice. And there's a lot of money here in property as well. So, the poor Amish? I don't think so. I don't think Mind so. Mind you, I don't think their houses cost what they cost up in our area. Well, it doesn't matter. It's still very nice. Anyways, that's it for us today. Hope you enjoy this video when you finally see it. That's the next problem I've got. I've got to get it up, and we'll see how the Internet here is working when it comes to that. And uh, we'll have more to share with you tomorrow.